back with another video for you guys and I figured I would do um, another PSA card grading informational video since the first one was pretty popular. Um, as many of you know, probably most of you know, um, PSA has doubled their grading prices. Uh, as you can see now, like economies, $50, regulars, $100, and express, which I usually use, is $150 per card, which um, just like a month ago, or maybe maybe a couple of weeks ago, it was just $75 a card. So I figured I would make a video on the relationship between value, price, and cost um, of these new um, grading prices from PSA. So to start, I made these charts so you guys can easily see um, what the value price and cost does is and used to be for PSA grading. And to get this out of the way, uh, before I get into it, I just want to say that these price increases um, are completely based upon strategy, uh, not greed. Um, you know, a lot of people are up in arms about the price um, increases, but it's really not about greed. There's just, you know, millions of submissions getting into PSA um, every year now. Um, so we're going to examine uh, the cost, which is the expense to you, uh, the grader, or the person submitting for grading, um, the price, which is the value of your graded card, and value, which is your profit margin, price minus cost. So we're going to look first at this Justin Herbert PSA 10 Gem Mint. Um, I actually just got the results back from mine, and I did fortunately get a Gem Mint um, grade, PSA 10. So as you can see, Pre-PSA price uh, increase, cost of grading for Express, um, which is what I used, was $75. And um, these charts are scalable to the other um, grading prices. I'm just using the Express because that is what I used. Uh, so when I got my Gem Mint grade, I looked it up, saw that it's going for about $1,100 right now. And that was as of March 9th, 2021. Um, so the value to me is $1,100 minus the cost of grading, $75, give or take, uh, you know, with the extra fees and shipping and whatnot. So I'm going to have a profit margin of $1,025. So similarly, post PSA price increase, the cost of grading express, $150. The value is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the price is the same, $1,100, and the value is going to be $950 with that different cost. So this just means that for the higher end um, cards, the ones that are more valuable, such as the Justin Herbert PSA 10, PSA is still extremely valuable. The value of um, the card is still exponentially greater than it would be uh, raw, of course. And so yes, the answer to if you should grade at this price point, the increased price point, is yes if you have valuable cards. Um, so we're gonna look at a lower end card. This is another one um, that I graded, the John Morant Premium Stock Hoops Base. Uh, this isn't my picture because I'm getting them back in the mail as we speak. I did get a Gem Mint 10 on this one as well. Um, but I, I did get it in um, when the cost was $75 for Grading Express, and the value um, is anywhere between $100 and $150. Um, I saw one for $140 on March 6th. So the value for me, my profit margin, is going to be $65. But if I had waited a couple months to grade, um, or if I submitted it now, the cost of grading is at the top here rather than the value because it is greater than both the price and of course then the value. So your price is $140, your cost of grading express was $150, and I would have actually taken a loss of $10. So my value is negative $10. Um, so that's kind of the strategic move by PSA is they want to have less submissions, they want to have less of these lower end cards being submitted. Um, which is a good thing for the longevity of the hobby and the value of PSA cards, even though it is a little bit frustrating uh, for us collectors at the moment. And another factor that I always considered was 
if my card doesn't get a PSA 10, um, am I going to get my money back? Is it, if it gets a PSA 9, if it gets a PSA 8, am I going to be able to break even? Is my is my uh, is my loss going to be minimized, or am I going to break break even? So pre PSA price increase, let's say we're looking at this Donovan Mitchell Optic rookie card and at a PSA 9. So let's say I submitted this card. I was really hoping for a PSA 10, but I knew that if I got a PSA 9, I would be all right because pre-PSA price increase, the grading cost was $75. The value of this card uh, as it sits today on March 10th is around $80. Um, uh, I just realized I did that wrong. So $5, um, you're going to get <laughs> profit margin of $5. So you're not exactly taking a loss. You probably don't take a loss with all the fees and shipping and whatnot, but you're gonna break even, so that's a factor to that I would have considered in the past. You know, if I was on the fence about submitting, but now with the um, cost being so high, if there's a card that I'm on the fence about, I am just not gonna submit that because a value, sorry, a price of eighty dollars, and then the value is gonna be a big loss to me because it's gonna be eighty dollars minus one hundred fifty, so I'm gonna be sitting on a loss of seventy dollars um, if I sold it so those are the factors that you need to consider now when um, grading with PSA so to review what this means PSA grading is still extremely valuable despite these price increase increases you just have to be a little bit more selective with what you're getting graded you need to review your cards as best you can um, submit them um, safely and all that. Uh, collectors, especially investors, because I know there's a lot of investors out there who are either looking to flip cards or hold them for the long term, um, need to be more selective in what they're choosing to submit. You know, you can't just pull the top rookie and submit it for grading if it's like a lower end product and expect to get this huge return that we, we've seen in years past. A grade lower than a PSA 10 in Gem Mint uh, may not allow you to break even, like I showed you with that Donovan Mitchell. Uh, you're gonna, you might be taking a pretty big hit, even with star players such as such as Mitchell. Um, I'll reiterate that this is a strategic move by PSA to reduce the number of submissions. Um, we're probably gonna experience a shakeout period uh, where collectors won't be submitting lower end cards such as the John Morant Hoops Premium. Um, this is a good thing for the hobby. PSA will be able to catch up um, to all the submissions. They'll, the value of a high-end card, PSA 10, is only going to go up because you know there's going to be less PSA slabbed cards out there um, if this strategic move does work, which I do expect it will. Uh, and this is good for the value of PSA and the longevity of the company. Uh, the value of a graded card is based on the reputation and uh, industry standing of the grading company. So, you know, PSA does remain the leader in card grading. Uh, all other companies are alternatives, including BGS, which holds the number two position, which is a good place to be. You know, number two is the number one alternative. All other companies are just, you know, lower tier alternatives, which I don't see the long-term value or success of those companies. Um, just because I'm sure, you know, in the next 10 years, the amount of collectors and investors will decrease, you know, just based on what talent's available and interest in the hobby, value, whatnot. So the long-term value of PSA and short-term for the higher value cards are there. Um, I did make a video on how to submit cards to PSA, and I hope this video helped. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.